Hello, this is Sean Woodell from Heavenly Soaps and Such, and today I'm going to be doing a Soap Talk Tuesday, and I'm going to be answering questions that uh, people have commented um, or posted in the comments on my YouTube videos. Um, the first question I'm going to answer, and I'm having a little difficulty with my camcorder. It keeps turning off on me, so if I keep, if I get up to look at it to make sure that it's recording, just know that that's what I'm doing. I'm not really sure why it's turning off, so I plugged it in to see if that'll help. All right. The first question um, I had, or a comment, was from Lisa Rogers, and it is about her soap. She makes pine tar soap for her husband, and she says it's just not as thin as mine. It's not as pourable, workable. Uh, it sticks to the side, and she wanted to kind of know what the difference would be. Um, and I'm not really sure, but the first thing I would ask is, did you run the recipe suit through soap calc? So even anytime you, even if you find a recipe online, you want to always run it through soap calc to make sure that the person has the right amount of water, uh, the right amount of oils, and that can um, affect how uh, fluid it is. Now, another thing is, uh, how are you soaping it? When you start the process, I recommend you let your, your oils cool down and you let your lye cool down to warm. Uh, and I don't really take a temperature. I just feel the container, uh, the lye container, and feel how warm it is on the sides. If it feels a little warm, uh, then I go ahead and use it. But that will start the process off at a lower temperature and it will cause it to cook at a lower temperature. If you start with really hot oils and really hot lye, and when they interact, it's going to increase the temperature tremendously. So therefore, you end up with really, really hot. And it's just going to cook too hot for the rest of the time. So I recommend that. Um, also, I recommend if you have a crock pot and you... Um, I soap on low, but if you have a crock pot that's just cooking too um, at too hot of a temperature, you can turn it on warm. I don't usually do that because warm is, is really too low for me. I usually take my lid and turn it this way and it lets a lot of the heat out um, and it will cause it to cool down and then when I feel like it's cooled down enough I'll turn it back and then if I feel like it's heating up too much again I just kind of keep doing that process and that helps with the temperature okay and also um, when you're at the end of the cook if you um, let your temp your soap batter cool down too much it will be too thick to work with so you want to uh, check the temperature. Uh, I like for mine to be around 165 to 170. Uh, I'll let it get down as low as 160 before I add my essential oils, but um, I like to work around 165. And Because when you add the essential oils or the fragrance or whatever you use and you're mixing, it's going to even cool it down more. So you definitely don't want it to get below 160, probably more so 165 um, at the end of the cook before you start working with it. And you need to hurry you know, I have at times walked away, had to go do something. I just didn't have a choice and come back and I let it get too cool. And it, it does affect the um, how fluid the soap is and how workable it is. Okay, I hope that answers the question for you, um, Lisa Rogers. All right, the, another question I had is from uh, Polly GTEx or GTEx, Jetix. But, so this question is from Polly. Polly says she makes cold processed soap and she's wondering what the benefit of cooking the soap is. Um, I'll be honest, I started out, I made one batch of cold process and it did not work for me. I didn't know what I was doing. So I, I found the hot processed soap and I started doing that and it has worked wonderfully. Now I do make cold processed soap from time to time, but the difference is, uh, and there's not really one's better than the other, this is my personal reason why I do the hot process soap. Uh, for one, um, I sell soap and I, I let myself get down to a point that I've got to have it like yesterday. And if I do cold process, I have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks and I, I just don't have that kind of time. So the hot process helps with that. Also, I found that if I do cold process soap and I cut it with my soap cutter and then let it cure, the bars end up way smaller than the normal size bars that I normally sell that are hot process. So when you're selling and you know one person's like, oh with the price of this bar, this bar's five dollars, but you this one's five dollars too, look at how much smaller they are. 
I didn't want that to be an issue uh, and I didn't like it so I said uh, I'm just not going to do the, the cold process anymore for that reason. Um, the cold process is easier, uh, like, takes less work on your part, less time on your part, but then you have to wait. The hot process is ready to use as soon as you can cut it. I mean now you do need to let it um, some of the water evaporate out of it but that's just a couple days versus weeks. So th those are just my my reasons. Um, I'm not into pretty soap, into making fancy cutesy soaps. Some people are and I think they're beautiful and I love looking at some of the designs and I'm like wow. But that's just not me. I'm into more of uh, therapeutic essential oils that are beneficial for conditions for the skin, um, the the aroma, the aromatic um, benefits of the essential oils. So I'm into more of the health conditions, the health things, um, and HP just provides all that um, for me. I'm not saying that cold process is not healthy for you, um, but usually people that do the the cold process are more in the the colors and designs and the, the um, nice fragrance oils that um and that's all fine but i'm just more into the hot process that just the health benefit it doesn't matter to me if it looks rugged uh, you can see that my soaps there's nothing really cute about that it's a nice bar soap and to me it just looks natural it looks old-timey old-fashioned which is what i love so um I'm not going to say one is really better than the other. I just prefer to do the hot process, and, and I think it's just a pref it's just a preference, a personal preference. Okay, and that question went out to Polly, um, and she said that oil never separates out when you do cold process, um, but that is one of the characteristics of hot process. So it's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's forcing it through the process. That's just one of the processes of getting it to force through and to be ready the next day versus in weeks and weeks. So great question Polly. Alright the next one uh, question I'm going to check it again is goes out to Happy JJ and I'm not sure um, if that's a male or female not not that it matters but I tend to say she but um, her question is she made the liquid coconut soap um, laundry detergent or the fabric um, the stain remover or bathroom cleaner you can use it for all kinds of things and she says that hers um she cooked it and when she went and mixed it it foamed up and spilled over uh, and that's just the lava effect and what happens with that is um you let it get too hot and if you soak it too hot of a temperature it will start that that foam over lava effect and once it kind of starts you can stir 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 and you might be able to stop it but usually it's too late it's going to foam over and then you're going to have a mess to clean up also when you mix your lye and your oil if you mix your lye really really hot and your oil really really hot and you mix them together the process of them um that happens it will cause it to heat up tremendously from that point so then you you end up with really really hot and it's like a boiling effect and it just boils over just like a pot in the kitchen so that's what happens. So I would make sure you let your stuff cool down before you start soaping it or add your lye. And I would make sure you're not cooking it at too high of a temperature. I have had that happen. Okay. Um, Sonella, I think it's Sonella Russell Dorch, asks, where do I get my soap trays from? And I think she's, uh, she's making reference to these Coca-Cola trays that I use. Um, and I'm going to try not to spill the soap over, but these trays here that I put the soap in, these are two liter Coca-Cola trays. Now, I have a friend who owns a store and she gave me some of them so I could uh, use those for um, curing my soaps and it makes it nice. You can't stack them directly on top of each other because then this tray will be sitting on the soap. You have to keep switching them. And, but it works wonderful for stacking them rather than sitting them and then I just let them cure there until they're ready to put up. But I did get that from a local store. Uh, you can um, ask the store about them. Ask a Coca-Cola guy maybe. I'm not sure if they would give them to you. Um, or you may see some at a dumpster or I mean just keep your eyes open, open for them. But that's where I got them from. Okay. Um, 
I had a Kithava, Kithava, Kithava asked uh, when I make um, apple cider vinegar, why do I add the sugar when the apples is supposed to be the sugar? Um, it's just as a precaution in case there's not quite enough sugar in the apples to uh, start that whole firm process then I add some extra sugar to give it just a little bit of boost. You can also add some apple cider vinegar with the mother and that will be a little boost for it. That's just something that I do. Um, the process eats up all the sugar so it's not left with the sugar but I'm just making sure that there's enough sugar in there. So great question. Um, Don Ivers asks, what is the stuff you're testing called and why do you um, test it? Um, and I was making some lavender um, soap and I was using a testing kit and I don't do this a whole lot now. Uh, and you can't read it, but I was testing with these drops and they're called fennel. Uh, I didn't realize it's rubbed off the ball off the um okay it tests the pH in the soap um and it, it tells you when what what uh, pH the soap is so you'll know is there active lye in it or or not and it's called phenolphthalein drops or solution so and this is I'll just show you kind of that. And you can't really see it, um, but I'll show you the word so you know how to spell it rather than me trying to spell it for you. Hope you can see that out there. Okay, and it does ch um, check the pH um, so you can see how, what pH the soap is at. I don't do that anymore. I, mainly I do this with liquid soaps so that I'll know what the pH is on the liquid soaps. Okay, uh, but great question, uh, Don. And like I said, that was making lavender soap. Okay, um, Patty Kemp. I was making some coconut um, oil soap, liquid soap. And she said, well, why was my water yellow before adding the lye? And, and Patty, I went back and looked because I was like, why? I'm not sure what she's talking about. And you're exactly right. And I have no idea. I don't remember. That's been a long time ago. I'm not sure if I added something to it. Um... I don't normally add anything to it, so I'm really not sure, but the water in the video did look yellow. It was like a, but I mean, I don't have any problem with my water, so it's it's not water out of the um, the, the faucet that would have messed that up, um, but I'm not sure why the water was yellow, but it did have a yellow tint to it, and at first I thought maybe it was the table, but then when I picked it, the, the picture up it was still kind of yellow so I don't know I do not know sorry okay um okay we'll go past that um uh, that's a different question for embroidery uh, I had some people ask me to write down the measurements of some things that I'm doing in videos and um, that, that it's, the video is too long to watch. Well, you know, I mean, and I'm not being ugly, but the whole purpose of the video is for you to watch the video. And I know my videos are long um, and I've struggled with that. But if I cut them out, you miss things. And then I try to just talk through it. And I know I ramble and say all kinds of stuff, but I try to give helpful hints and helpful things that I've learned over time that I wish somebody had told me. Um, so I'm not going to go back and write out. I just don't have the time to go back and write out all the recipes. So if you will, just kind of go through the videos and write down the recipes. If I'm given a recipe, a lot of times I don't give out the recipes. So I'm just showing you the process and how I do it. Um, so you, I may not even give out measurements. Okay, and that was um, for har, H-A-R-R-R, -R -R. hair, har. Okay, um, Sherry Harpster asked, what do I line my uh, molds with? Um, and I line my molds with a shelf liner that I get from Walmart. And this is it. Um, it's thin, I'm going to get it close. It's kind of a little shiny, not real shiny. It's a rubbery feel. Um, and it's thin, that thin, and it's the same on this side as it is on this side. 
and you get it at Walmart. Um, it's shelving. Now, I, I did try the one that had a certain design on this side, and it was different on the other side. That didn't work at all. I mean, it worked for a couple of times, but it didn't last. This um, lasts me forever. I mean, not forever, but it lasts me. I, I can't tell you how many times I use the batches um, in the molds, and it just keeps working and working and working. So this has worked wonderfully, and I get it at Walmart. Okay, so I hope that answered your question on um, Sherry. Um, I have a lot of people comment um, that they love the videos and they love the children. I try to keep the children out of the videos and try to make them like stay in there and be quiet while I'm doing them because some I don't want people to complain. But thank you so much. We're blessed with the children and we love them. They're sweet. Okay. Um, I had somebody say that um, that sometimes I talk when I have the video and when I'm using the blender, and I'll be honest, I, I find it I feel like I have to talk when I'm doing the blender. I hate not to be talking because you're just sitting there listening to the blender. So I'm trying to talk more to at the um, close up to the camcorder so that maybe you're hearing it um, while I'm talking. I'm usually just rambling, telling you things I'm thinking of as I'm doing it. But I hate just stand there and let you listen to me just, just do the blender and me not saying anything. So I try to talk. Um, sorry about that if it's a little hard to hear at times. Um, I'll try to be more mindful of that and make sure that I'm talking louder and closer to the, the camcorder. Okay. Um, and that went out. Well, I won't say who that went out to. All right. Um... I have some more embroidery, so I do need to make the question and answer session for embroidery. Um, do I have a shop that I sell my soap in? Um, I don't have a um, an online shop. No, I don't. I've been saying that I'm going to set one up, but I just haven't done it. Uh, but I do have a lot of customers that contact me through Facebook and tell me what they want, and we go through Etsy. I mean, I'm sorry, we go through PayPal. And they pay me through PayPal, and I ship it out to them. Um, never had any problems. Um, so, if you're wanting some soap, uh, if you'll contact me um, on my soap page, which is on Facebook, which is Heavenly Soaps and Such, I'll be glad to, um, you know, us to work out an order that you want, what you need, and ship it out to you. And like I said, I use PayPal. And I have had some people mail me money orders. That I, I do that too. But I do want to make a um, website for selling. I just haven't done it. Okay, um, and that went out for Martha West. Okay, uh, Sandra Burke asked me where did I purchase my Himalayan sea salt in 25 pounds pink. And I, I ordered it from the San Francisco Salt Company, I think is what it's called, out of, I'm not sure if it was out of California, I think it's out of California. Uh, but I ordered it from there. In the 25, uh, I order 25 pounds at a time. Um, uh, where's the best place? Sandra Burke also asked, where's the best place to order your essential oils? It depends on um, how much you're buying. Um, I order mine in 33.3 uh, ounces and I get mine from the New Directions Aromatics and they do have a website. Uh, and you can go on there and look, but I buy it in this container here. So, and that's how I order mine because I use a lot of it. Now, there are some um, essential oils that I don't use as much of. I, they do smell, sell a smaller size, but I get mine from there. Uh, and I, I usually place a big order at one time. It lasts me a long time. But I love their essential oils and the prices. You can't beat them. And the oils are really, really good oils. So, um, I had somebody ask, um, Seption asked what soap can clean the shoes. And I, and it's the coconut oil soap, liquid soap video. So I'm assuming they're talking about, uh, where I use some of the coconut oil with some water and shake it up and using this spray bottle to clean the bathrooms and stuff. You can spray that on shoes. You can spray it on spots on your clothes. Um, you can clean the sink. I mean, you can put a little bit of it in your uh, mop water, just a little, and use it to help clean the floors. It, 
it's endless what you can do with it. But it should should be able to clean the shoes. And I'm not sure if I made a reference to cleaning shoes. I probably did because I usually will spray them down and let them sit and then wash them. Okay. Um, somebody else asked. Oh, that's Sonella. Asked again, where did I get the soap trays from? I've already answered that. What does lard do for your skin? How does it compare to coconut oil or olive oil? Um, coconut oil can be very drying to your skin. So I, it can be. In, in soap it is, unless you're super fat. Uh, but coconut oil makes a very hard bar. But lard is more moisturizing. Um, and it does make a softer bar. I mean, it'll harden up, but you have to be careful with it in the shower. You don't want to let it sit in water. It will soften. Olive oil is very, very soft. It takes a long time to cure out. Um, but that olive oil is very good for your skin as well. The lard's just kind of old timey. Um, I have a lot of older people that that's what they want because that's what their great great grandmother used to make and they want lard lye soap. So, um, but it is moisturizing for your skin. And I know some people don't agree with the lard because it comes from an animal. And that's your preference. I have some customers that want all organic oils and I accommodate. I have some customers that don't want lard in theirs. I accommodate. And then I have customers that's all they want is the lard. So it's just a personal preference. Um, okay, let's see. Alright, let's go on down. Some people were just, just commenting. Um, Mama, I gotta go boo Okay, go ahead. Go Mama, in here. Can I go in that right Yeah. Then? No talking though, okay? I'm, I'm doing a, um, a video. Mama. Mm -mm. No, no talking. Go. We're not going to discuss you going to the bathroom. Go. Alright, let me check and make sure the camera's up. Yep, it's still up. All right, I'm going to answer a couple more questions. Um, how much of the super fast, soup, they put super fast, but they mean super fats. How much of the super fats do you use? And I'm going to close this door so I don't hear the fan. Okay. How much of the super fats do you use? Um, and I, I had given that out in another video. Let's see if I have it right off. I mean, right on hand. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to put my hands on this right away. Not sure what I do with the paper. Oh, here it goes. I found it. Okay. Uh, the super fast that I use, I use um, half an ounce of coconut oil. Or I've, I've quit measuring, it just takes too long, and I figured out that a half of an ounce of coconut oil is about one tablespoon. So I use one tablespoon of coconut oil, and I just use a regular metal spoon. It doesn't have to be accurate, because these are super fats, so it's not gonna affect the lye uh, in hot process soap. This is something that's gonna be left in the bar at the end, and of course you don't wanna use way too much, but if you get a little less, a little more, it's okay. So one tablespoon of coconut oil, five tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of shea butter, um, two tablespoons of glycerin, and one, I usually use one ounce of coconut, cocoa butter. I'm not sure, I didn't write down the measurements on that. And then I use one teaspoon of vitamin E. Um, now, that is for um, recipes that, that make 20 bars, and they're like between six and seven ounces each. So of course, if your if your loaf is, is small and you're only coming up with ten bars, you probably want to cut that in half. You don't want to use those exact measurements. But I have twenty bars, um, and that works out uh, really well. So um, just change that to to match the amount of bars you are using. Okay, hope that helped. Um, and that went out to Kathy McComic. Okay. Um, Let's go through. Um, I 
have Lori Bueller said that she's going to make some of the coconut um, liquid soap soon. Great job. Let me know how it turns out, Lori. Somebody asked, am I out of business, Dave? Um, no, and I didn't answer. I've just been super, super busy, but I'm trying to get back into my videos again. Um, okay. Um, trying to find all of the soaping videos. Um, Uh, and Keep the Change commented that she loves the babies and how patient I am with them and how I can, um, he's, he whispers, my son whispers, he's trying to be respectful and not make a lot of noise, but he has things sometimes that he just has to tell mommy. So he does whisper and it can be sweet and it can be annoying sometimes, but he, he's a sweet little guy. Okay, um, I had Blanca de Villa told me that when I rebatch soap and you cut it in cubes, if you soak your cubes in your liquid overnight, it will help them dissolve faster. And that is a great idea, Blanca. And I, I'm definitely going to try that. I, ha I had never thought of that, but because the soap's really hard, and if you soak it in water, it is going to get um, a lot softer, and then I can melt it quicker and easier. So thank you so much, Blanca, for that tip, and I'm definitely going to try that, and I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I had somebody, Kingdom Focus, asked me what was the device I used when I was making the liquid laundry detergent uh, when I was whipping it. And that's called a stick blender. Uh, the stick blender, um, you can get them at Walmart. I'm not sure where you're from or what stores but usually in the kitchen center at different stores sells stick blenders I actually get mine from yard sales but and when I, I try to keep three about three on hand so if one goes out I just throw it away and grab another one saves a lot of money that way but um, sometimes you can't find them okay uh, somebody said I'm the bonnet soaper Molly Molly Miley no Momo Momo Miley or Momo Millie Miley Momo said I'm the bonnet soaper with three pots I love to do three pots because I do them all, if I do them all the same, it's just, it takes just a little bit longer to do three pots as I do one pot. So it, it helps me save a lot of time. Um, um, and Momo also said, why don't you use the bar you like as a standard and sit it against the loaf to cut the rest? And I'm not really sure. I guess that was back when I was cutting them by my hand and the sizes would be so different. I would measure them. Uh, I switched she's saying that if I had used the bar that I got right, I wouldn't have had to use a ruler. Now I use some soap cutter, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. But that's a good, that was a good uh, answer. Um, and I've already answered, Momo, the question about what uh, I use to test my um, soap with. Um... Nicole, Nicole Cole asked me what's my email. She has lots of questions to ask me. Um, Nicole, if you just um, send me a message on, uh, if you're Facebook, send me a message on Heavenly Soaps and Such. I will get back to you um, and answer your questions. I don't use my email a whole lot, uh, but my email is seanwoodell at yahoo.com. So, S-H-A-W-N-W-O-O-D-E-L-L -L at yahoo.com. Just bear with me because, like I said, I don't, I don't check that email a lot. I usually check my work email more. Okay, uh, Rachel Rookshire said she watched the ads for me. Thank you so much, Rachel. I appreciate that. Watching the ads helps me out. Um, it gives me a little bit of the income for all the time that I spend in doing the videos, editing, posting, commenting. So thank you for watching the videos. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, Cheryl said that um, wearing the gloves while you um, cut cold process soap, you don't have to. Um, and she does the rubbing on the edges of the bars like I do and never had a problem with the lie. I don't normally wear gloves. I just, I had a couple comments, people comment that I should be wearing gloves and that I need, if I'm going to make videos, I need to teach people about safety. So now I don't wear the gloves, but I tell you about being safe 
And I tell you, it's your choice. And to please be safe, wear gloves if you're not sure until you're comfortable. So um, I don't normally wear the gloves, Cheryl. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Um, hmm. I had somebody else say they make charcoal soap similar to the one I made. They add the charcoal after the soap has almost neutralized. And it bleeds oil after three weeks. The soap gets so oily to the surface. I do not know what is wrong because I am using the same base oils to all my other soaps and cook them till I'm um, saponification, but oil bleeding did not happen to them. I'm not really sure why it would bleed. Uh, my charcoal soap doesn't bleed. Um, here's some end bars here. But this is my bars here. You can see that I have a label in there. There's nothing on the label. Um, there's no moisture in it at all. Um, and these are the end pieces. It's just as dry as it can be. Now, I do use coconut oil. I mean, um, I think I use um, oatmeal in them. I'm not sure. May I would probably run my, well, maybe run your recipe back through soap count, but if you're saying you're not normally having a problem unless you add the charcoal, maybe add it closer toward the beginning of the cook and see if that changes it. I, I'm really not sure, um, CC, why that would happen. So, sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, how did you start it? How did I get started? Maggie Badu asked how I got started. Um, I actually was at work. I worked at a school and I had a lady, I overheard her say that she had made soap over the weekend. So I questioned her and kind of it fascinated me. She told me how she did cold process. I came home, found a recipe, made it, and it was awful. I had to throw it out. It was terrible. Um, and I kind of started researching and found, stumbled upon hot process and just started making it. Um, I love the idea that you can make things on your own and that you know what's in it and there's no chemicals and you're able to control the stuff that you're putting on your body and in your body. So that was kind of the starting point for me and then I never looked back and it kind of went from soap to all kinds of other things. Um, soaps to creams to sugar scrubs to shampoo to laundry detergent uh, to kombucha which is what you drink, milk kefir. It's just kind of gone from there. So that's how I got started. I overheard a lady talking about making soap and it just uh, piqued my interest. Okay, um, I had a plus size picker said to please tell newbies to use gloves and goggles when handling the light. It can cause some serious burns and splash in your eye. And yes, if you're a newbie, um, do what works for you. Um, and be careful, you know, when you pour, I try to show people how to pour. Don't just pour it in the middle. Pour it over where it's draining down the edge of the pot rather than pour it in the middle and it's splashing everywhere. But please be safe. Um, if you, you know, wear gloves till you get a feel for it. Uh, and goggles to me is a little bit of a stretch. But if you feel the need to, if you really think because if it splashes in your eyes, now it will burn. So you might want to wear goggle, goggles to begin with. That's kind of up to you, but please just be safe because it can burn you. It can burn you, especially in your eyes. Um, C12451 said, do you have a video for making dishwasher liquid detergent? Um, I, I haven't ever done a video on that. I have made it, but I've never done a video on it. But I found that they just didn't work that well, and so I kind of gave up and quit with it. Um, Okay, um, uh, God's Child said, I do a great job of teaching um, and, and sharing. Thank you. Um, I enjoy sharing the information, so thank you for that. You done? All right. Mama, guess what I done? What? I was in there, and I bookied, and I got right up, and, and I forced to come out, and I wiped my butt, and I checked it, and I, I done that, but, and there was no more on it, but I... So I left my underwear and I put my shirt up and I just put them back on. Okay, and you just told everybody on the video all about that, didn't you? You're proud of yourself, aren't you, though? You can give me a hug. That's a good boy. Good job. He's learning. All right, go get back on your score. I'm almost done. 
Okay, I'm gonna make sure the video is still working. I know, good job. Right, good job. Okay, close the door. I can see my Yeah, close the door, thank you. Bye. All right, sorry about that, I am so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't stop him because he is so proud of himself. He is learning to wipe and take care of his stuff in the bathroom and he just had to tell mommy that he had done it all by himself and checked and we're working on him being able to be a little bit more independent and i'm sorry he just told all of youtube world about his experience in the bathroom but he's five thank you for overlooking that okay um try to see do i have a website I'm trying to find anything more you may have online and if you sell anything and that's the C12451. Again, I don't have a website other than my Facebook page, um, Heavenly Soaps and Such. Uh, or you can search um, Sean Woodell, S-H-A-W-N-W-O-O-D-E-L-L. -L. And I, uh, I sell through PayPal. People tell me what they want. I can do you an invoice and sell it through PayPal. Okay, so if you want something, you can let me know. Um, let's see... Somebody said they tried their liquid soap, but the oil and the potash solution seem didn't mix. I could see oil separated. Uh, you probably didn't blend it enough. Um, you probably need to blend it more. And I'm hoping that you ran that recipe through soap calc. And that's Dui Nijuin. It's D-U-I is the name. Um, make sure that you ran it through soap calc and blend 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 you need to use that stick blender and blend it blend it blend it because it can take a while to uh, blend together um i guess someone just talking um Uh, somebody asked, does the coconut oil laundry detergent or the stain remover spray and wash really get the stains out? It, it does. Um, now, some stains, you know, you just can't, I can't get out. But uh, for the most part, it gets them out. If I spray it and let them um, sit and, and then scrub it with a toothbrush and maybe spray it again. Sometimes it takes two washings to get it out. Sometimes it comes out while you're brushing it with a toothbrush. So it just really depends on what it is and how long it's been in there. Um so you just have to try it. it's like anything even stuff you buy at walmart or the grocery store sometimes it works and sometimes it just won't work on certain stains uh i told the super fat percentages av or av ready um asked i told that just a few minutes ago so you should already have those um the the lie percentage um there's not a percentage um well, the lie concentration on here says 28.843%. Um, and then the, what else did they ask? The water discount. Um, I used, I didn't really use a water discount. I used the water as percentage of oil weight was 38%. 38%. And that's what I use on all mine. I don't change that at all. Uh, I use the 38%. And just let soap calc um, calculate the um, the percentage of the lie. So soapcalc.net. Um, somebody, God's child said I'm down to earth and explain everything well. I try to. Uh, sorry, I babble on and on sometimes, but I try to explain it um, in a way that you can understand it, and in the way that I wish someone had explained it to me. Um, let's see. Is the oatmeal used to add a bit of scraping of the skin? I saw you softened it with water, so there goes my that or not. Um, if you soften it with water, it, um, it it does have a softer. It's like the milky part of the oil comes out, not the oil, the, the oatmeal comes out into the soap. And so it's benefit when you're washing, it's just the oatmeal milk type stuff comes on your skin. If you uh, put the oatmeal in the, some oil, like your super fats, it does make a scratchier. It's not real scratchy, but it's a, more of an exfoliating bar. 
but it's not bad. It's not like something you, you could use it every time you wash and it just gets off the dead skin, but it's not rough. You don't feel it and go, ooh, this is scratchy, but it does create a little bit of a scratch. Um, It says, when are you safe from burns for the lye? If you're doing hot process soap, um, usually when you're pouring it into the mold, it's ready and you're, you're safe from burns. Uh, I still would be careful, but definitely when you cut it in the very next morning or like in eight, eight, six, eight hours, it, it's, it's, ready. it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Um, when I'm stirring it after it's real thick and I'm cooking it, I don't usually worry about it at that point. If you get something on your hand, I wash it right off and no burns or anything. But you just figure it out for yourself, kind of, because different people's skin's different. I had a uh, lye pop on my arm and I knew it popped on me and I just wiped it off real quick and didn't have anything or maybe just a little red area or might feel a slight burn but no sore or anything. But then there are people who've gotten lye. Um, pops on them or it splashes on them and it gives them sores and burns. So it kind of depends on your skin. I have tough skin. I'm tough. Just kidding. Be, just be careful and kind of figure it out for yourself. But um, definitely while it's liquid and it can splash, I would worry about it more than I would when it's in the batter form. Okay. Um... Let's see, uh, she had some more. This was from Jim Stewart. Um, and he says he wants to try a simple bar himself. Uh, Jim, I hope you did try to make some soap. That was five months ago. Uh, if you did, please let me know how it turned out. I would love to hear it. Um, um, I had somebody ask for the uh, measurements of the laundry detergent. You'll have to go back and watch the video, and uh, those measurements should be in there. Okay, I'm trying to get it to pop up more questions. Hmm. It's not wanting to pop up any more questions. So let me go back up, and I'm not sure. I did a lot of questions, um, and I actually have some questions that are held for review now. So I will go ahead and see if I can answer them. Uh, if people want to send you crock pots, utensils, and other items, do you have a post office box or a patron account for donations? How do we purchase your soaps? Hmm. Um. That's interesting. Uh, it's from PMG Auto Avenue, 14 hours ago, making activated um, soap. Uh, well, the way you can purchase the soaps is um, by going to my Facebook page, Heavenly Soaps and Such. Send me a message, uh, comment on a picture, or whatever. Just tell me what you want, and <clears throat> I go through PayPal and um, actually sell soap through there. So you can do that. As far as donations, I've never had anybody want to send me some donations as crock pots, utensils, and other items. I, I would actually love that. That would be great. Um, and I will actually uh, post you uh, my address so you can um, send me something if you like. That would be wonderful. If anybody else has something they want to send me, I'd be glad to, um, to take it. That would be wonderful. And sorry I'm looking at the uh, laptop rather than looking so much at the camera. I'm going to let my little guy tell you hello. Come over here. Look at the camera over here. Tell him hello. Hello. Tell him you've been doing your schoolwork. I've been doing my schoolwork. All right. Go back in and get Mama, it. Yes. I learned something. What did you learn? I wanted to tell you something. I learned something. Come over here. What did you learn? It was, I learned something. Like, you see that? You see this? Yeah, that tile on the floor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's arrow. That's what it is. And, and, and the floor and, and, and that in there in the kitchen mm -hmm. is white. That's what I learned. It's white? No, it's wide. Oh, the hardwood floor is wide. Oh, and this is narrow. Not arrow. Narrow. You're right. Tile is narrow compared to a long strip of hardwood floor. He's mm -hmm. learning opposites. Narrow and wide. Good job. Good job. Mama. Uh-huh. 
Your stones, I need to tell you something. Yes. They please. look, you see them right there? Mm -hmm. they, they're, uh, they look, they're like, if they're square, they look like they're arrow. Narrow. 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 They do look narrow, don't they? Cool. Mom, and yes. Okay. And why does, why does video tapes, video tapes, why do they, why do they, why I'll do, touch it. why do they have like that stuff and, and, and that, and Don't that. put your fingers up there. So I can adjust it like this. It's on the tripod and I can adjust it and get it a certain direction. What's that? Button? Okay. Going back in there to the bar to your score. I'm almost done and I'll be in there in just a minute. What is this? Okay. What's okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, somebody else asked where I can buy, where they can buy an embroidery machine. Uh, that's nothing to do with the soap. You, Mama. I love you too, baby. Go ahead, get up to the bar. I love it. Um, so I, that's all the questions I can get to come up. Uh, and it says all videos, but I know that's not all of my questions. But I'm scrolled down. Maybe I'm trying to go down too far. But it um, that's as far as it's going down. So I don't know if I have any more questions. And I'm sorry this is going on and on. Um. Go down further. Oh, actually, I'm getting some more. I think I'm getting some more. So we'll go back through some more. I hope I don't melt. Um, I saw the word melt. I hope I don't miss anybody. Um, okay. Um, how much super fats have already answered? How do we? How do, hi, do we have to add, or, oh, that's something else for some other, I do videos on making things like in the kitchen, uh, apple cider vinegar and things, and then I do embroidery videos also, so I'm kind of, some of the questions are like all mixed up, um, actually I think I may have already answered all of them, let me go down to the bottom again. Uh, but send me questions. I know I have been slow about the questions, but um, I will try to to um, be a little more responsive and get to them a little quicker than I have been doing. Um, somebody said they love hearing me converse with my kids. Um, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, they're a blessing. Uh, let's go down to the bottom. Okay, here's, um, somebody said, for laundry detergent, you do not add washing. Okay, this is Nasley Duart. She says, for the laundry detergent, uh, you do not add borax or washing soda. I have done that in the past, and, and I've kind of quit. I just used the straight, um, coconut oil liquid soap rather than add the, the borax and stuff. So, you can do that, um, but... I've kind of found that it really doesn't help. Uh, is the soap disinfecting? Uh, I don't know if it would be considered disinfecting, but it cleans the clothes, so I guess it's disinfecting. Um, it's just soap, and it washes and cleans. So I'm not sure how really how to answer that question. Um, and then... Would you be willing to break down how you got this recipe? I'm not really sure what she means by that. I just went on soapcalc.net, chose the liquid soap, and I put in how many uh, ounces of bowl I wanted to use, and it actually gave me the recipe. So you'd have to get on there and kind of play with that some. Um, somebody want to know what am I using for my base oil? Uh, in my soaps. Um, my base oils, I use coconut oil, I use lard, I use soybean oil, I use castor oil. Wait, is that everything? Uh, that's the wrong recipe. That's an organic recipe. Um, but I use coconut oil, lard, soybean oil, castor oil, and stearic acid. That, that's what I use in my base oil, my base uh, recipe. Okay, where do you buy your bucket of lard from? I buy it from um, where I can get it the cheapest. Usually Piggly Wiggly has the big um, buckets. So, and this has something else in it, but uh, this is what I use here. 
Land use law are 25 pounds. And if they go on sale, I'll buy a bunch. One time, Piggly Wiggly had a $25, no, $5 or $10 off coupon. I bought as much lard as I could to use the coupons. Um, but anywhere, wherever you can get it, the cheapest. But the more you buy, usually the cheaper it is. And it lasts for a long, long time. So, we'll go back up. Um, I, I don't see this question now, but I do remember it. Somebody asked, do I use distilled water? Um, I, I don't. Well, I, I use filtered water. But initially, I used water out of the... Well, initially, I boiled the water. I got tired of that. And then I started using water out of the, just right out of the faucet, that's county water. And then now we have a home, a home um, filter system for the whole house. So I use it right out of the, um, out of the faucet. And it, it tests at the same number as the filtered water where I used to filter it uh, in a little filter. It tests the same thing. But we don't really, we don't have problems with our water really. Uh, the reason I filtered it though was because of the chlorine smell. There was a little bit of chlorine smell at times and I just wanted to get everything out of the water that I could. So we did a whole home filter. So that's what I used, filtered water. But I never had any trouble with the water out of the faucet. Never caused any um, problems with my soap or anything. Okay. Um... I've already answered that. Okay, so I'm getting some new questions now. Um, and I say um. And somebody did comment on here about being an ummer. I try not to be an um, um. And I had commented about, sorry that I keep saying um. So the person was like, don't worry about it. Um, um, see there? Don't worry about it that she was an ummer too. But that you can, you know, if you really concentrate on it, you can try to get over it. And if I concentrate and hear myself doing it, I can stop myself. But a lot of times, I'm doing it and I don't really even know I'm doing it. So, I, therefore, I don't stop. Uh, what is the temperature of lye and oils? Um, there we go again. I usually just cool them down to like, not quite room temperature, but warm. There's no, I mean, there are exact temperatures that people use. But I use as long as they're, I heat them up and just let them sit and cool down. And when they're warm, instead of hot, I just, um, I use it. I do have lye for sale. Somebody asked, Joy Griffin asked, do I have lye for sale? Yes, I do. I have both lies that I, I buy in bulk and I, I have sold. Um, and she, that was actually six months ago. Um, she's going to start a soaping business. Thank you for your quick response. And I have not responded to her, but she did leave a number for me to call her. Um, Joy Griffin, if you'll, if you'll contact me on my so my Facebook page, Heavenly Soaps and Such. I'll get back with you on the live. Okay. Um, uh, somebody told me I can re, and this is not really soap, but I can remold cracked bath bombs. Um, and they can, you can remold them even after they dried. So I need to check into that. I, I don't. I did a little bit of bath bombs that I kind of got out of that quick. I didn't really care for it. Okay. And somebody commented about my my recipes uh, that they're huge. Um, I do sell, so I, I try to make a huge batch. Like I said, I usually do three crock pots at a time, which is 60 bars of soap. Um, and, you know, you can you can make a smaller batch. Just um, find, a, find a recipe that you want to use. And you can run it through Coke Soap Calc and change the amount of ounces that you want. And it'll make a smaller bar or just cut it in, I mean a smaller loaf. Or just cut it in half, take a recipe and cut it in half and just do half of everything. Uh, that's kind of up to you. But, yeah, I do really big... Um, loaves. Uh, this talks about uh, milk, any kind of milk that you add is does it the purpose of making a bar moisturizing. Yes, if you use goat's milk, and I, I've never used evaporated milk or cream, but goat's milk makes a really, really lathering, moisturizing lather bar. 
it, it's just really, really moisturizing. And the lather's thick and it just feels so nice. It's, it's a really nice bar of soap with goat's milk. And I'm sure you can use other kinds of milk as well. Um, leftover eggnog, I have no idea. You would just have to try it in a small batch and see. Uh, let's see, I'm almost done. Um, and Karina told me I could gift wrap my box that I sell my light in, and it would make it really, really um, pretty uh, and inviting. I may try that. Uh, that would, would make it cute. I haven't thought of that, so I might, I might wrap it then. Uh, thanks for that idea, Corina. Mama's son, hold on a second. Mommy. I, I am still getting, this is Joy Griffin, I am still getting the lie in bulk. Um, so just shoot me a message. Don't hit the camera, baby. Back over. Uh, shoot me a message and I'll, um, we can kind of discuss that. Um, what's the silk for? The silk gives, uh, that I add into the lye mixture, the silk gives the bar a slip. So it's kind of like a nice slip when you're, you're washing with it. It just makes it smoother on your skin and it makes it, it come off easier. I just, I saw some other people doing that and I tried it, um, so I really liked it. <clears throat> but so it's just a silk that you use. You melt it in with the the lye water. Um, I've already answered the question about super fats, Nancy. So you can go back and look at what I said about super fats. Um, I have somebody ask for questions. Actually, that's embroidery, so I won't go over that. Um, mm, wait a minute. I'm almost done. <coughs> okay, so that's all the, the questions I'm going to do today. I know that was kind of long, but um, send me some questions. I'll try to answer questions in with my Soap Talk Tuesdays that I'm going to try to do every week. I'm not going to promise that they'll get done, but I will try to do them more often. So send me some questions if you'd like some answers, and I'll try to address those in my Soap Talk Tuesdays. But thanks for all the questions, for interacting, for all the nice comments. I really love that, um, and, and I'm glad that some of what I'm talking about is helpful um, to you So in your soaping journey. And I hope everyone out there can make some soap. But anyway, see you in my next video. This is Sean Woodell from Heavenly Soaps and Such, and I'll see you next time. Tell them bye. 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 Mom.